Hi friends, this is uh, Dr. Raghuraman, Chief Executive of KRG Rainwater Foundation. It's high time that uh, we talk on the subject of rainwater harvesting as we are in the middle of an active monsoon season. So Tamil Nadu uh, is also facing uh, less rainfall. Actually, November month is a high rainfall period. So everywhere talk is going on why we are not getting good rainfall in this month. So it is high time that we talk on this subject, how to capture the rainwater, which is a precious gift of nature. So nature has already always been kind to our country. If you analyze the climate data for the past 100 years, so India gets around 1150 mm of rainfall on an average, whereas Tamil Nadu receives between 900 to 1000 mm, while Chennai receives 1400 mm. So if you see even Chennai rainfall, as of now, we have already got 1150. So only the November, which is a major contribution to the rainfall season, the rainfall is not adequate enough. So that's why everywhere the talk is going on uh, about this subject. So let us come to the main subject. So why we have to do rainwater harvesting? So what is the advantage of it? See, whenever it rains, what happens is 10 to 30 percent of the water percolates into the ground depending upon the surface formations. If it is a concrete surface, it will be only 5 to 10 percent, where is a clay, it will be 15 to 20 percent like that. If it is a sandy terrain, it will be up to even 35 percent. So the remaining water will follow the gradient and flow through drains, then nalas, then rivers, ultimately it will go to the sea. The rainwater that is percolating into the ground is stored as groundwater in subsurface formations. The balanced water which flows as surface runoff, that is water that is falling onto the ground and flows as runoff is called surface water, which is collected in tanks, rivers, then the river also uh, getting water from the surface water, then finally that goes to the sea. In simple terms, Rainwater can be harvested in two ways. One is roof water harvesting, another one is surface water harvesting. Rainwater harvesting is not a great science, it is only tradition renewed methodology. See roof water, uh, earlier I said about roof water harvesting, basically roof water harvesting is nothing but capturing the roof water uh, that is the purest form of rainwater that is falling onto the roof. So the rainwater has a TDS of only 5 to 10 mm and even a rainfall of 2 to mm, 2 mm to 5 mm will generate runoff water. Whereas in surface water, it will be 5 to 10 mm, uh, the water, the surface should get saturated, then only the runoff will start. Whereas in a concrete portion or in a roof water, the moment it falls onto the roof, Immediately within 2 mm rainfall, that initial some uh, evaporation loss will be there, so immediately it will start running. So this roof water can be collected through the rainwater drain pipes and can be diverted to a designated sump. Um, but after passing through a salt filter, because rainwater also, so what we consume or what we use needs some mineral constituents also. So when it passes through a sand filter before uh, getting collected in a sump, it will acquire the mineral uh, constituents and that even you can consume the water provided the roof is exclusively kept only for collection of roof water. Because normally what happens, a lot of bird droppings takes place, then uh, dogs go to the uh, terrace and then urinate, so better to avoid for uh, drinking purpose unless or until it is again treated for all other applications we can, we can use washing even utensils, cloths, car wash, floor wash, all purposes. So this is basically roof water harvesting. Uh, this is for reuse. So roof, the water, the rain water can be either reused or recharged or recycled. So what uh, I have talked now is reuse of the rain water. So the roof water can also use for recharge purposes, whereas the, uh, there will be open wells and bore wells in the house uh, premise. So what we can do, we can divert this roof water through a dedicated uh, system of chambers and pipeline, interconnected through this chamber pipeline, and then diverted directly to the bore well 
if it is a hard rock terrain if it is a hard rock terrain only you have to put it directly into the borewell after passing through a filter see normally the problem happens is when it is a sandy terrain if you put directly into the borewell what happens is agitation takes place where the water enters into the groundwater system so sometimes there is chance for entry of silt into the borewell which will gradually silt the borewell and the depth will come down then and the uh, water uh, yield also will reduce the another major advantage of putting roof water into the bore wells or tube wells so here i would like to clarify what is a tube well and bore well tube well are nothing but same bore well where a tube is put as a casing uh, pipe to avoid casing so this is normally done in a sandy terrain whereas in a hard rock terrain it will be a naked bore so when you put uh, roof water which has a tds of only 5 to 10 ppm the high uh, salty or brackish water having tds of 4000 ppm 6000 ppm in some areas gradually this 10 ppm almost like a distilled water gets mixed with the uh, high salinity water and then the quality will improve the tds will come down to 2000 ppm so over a period of time it will not be immediate over a period of time in the course of maybe 3 years or 4 years the quality will be improved to a considerable extent so so these are the uh, uh, ways by which roof water harvesting is done second is surface water harvesting see apart from the roof all around the house you have a paved area you have a green belt area and then you have open area also so the water that is falling on to the surface a portion will go into the ground the balance will uh, generate a surface runoff and Uh, goes out of the premise to the storm water drain and then nullas and rivers so this water instead of allowing it to go out of the premise can be uh, collected and diverted to recharge structures like a recharge pit or linear trenches within the house in the green belt area or you can put it in car park or concreted area also with a cover slab so so that the water is not allowed to go out of the premise apart from this collection of water surface water in the recharge pits and trenches the remaining portion of water that will still go out of the premise can be collected near the exit gate by putting a cattle trap and harvest the water by diverting it to a nearby recharge pit so that's why either a single house or a community as a whole they can do both roof water harvesting as well as surface water harvesting by roof water harvesting you can increase the quality of the water plus you can increase replenish the ground water table by surface water harvesting mainly you will be recharging the ground water and indirectly reap the benefit out of it by withdrawing from the bore well or open well so these are the basic advantages apart from this in a city whenever even for a small rainfall so earlier it used to be only during torrential downpours we used to see water logging but even for a small rainfall these days you see water logging everywhere so this is either uh, due to the non availability of storm water drains or choking of the drains or uh, the poor management of uh, uh, water drainage at all so what we can do in these areas so we can put uh, chambers say suppose even from little higher gravity also we can divert by putting sectorial collection chambers so dedicated chambers we can put and divert the water from this water logged area to a favorable location that we can study the area and find out a suitable location where this water can be diverted to a recharge structure so let it not be on the road itself if there will be open area or green belt just adjacent to the roads or a small park may be there or some open ground like a children play area will be there so all these places we can create recharge structures like a recharge pit recharge pit is nothing but a recharge well small recharge well if it is a if the sand bed is within 5 or 6 feet so you can go up to only 2 meter or to a maximum of 3 meter if the sand layer is beyond 3 meters it is better to drill a bore well inside the uh, recharge chamber so that one is safety aspect second is the cost of construction of a deeper open well that is with a recharge chamber is very costly so the water can be directly taken to the aquifer by constructing a bore well inside the recharge chamber so this way the water not only the water problem uh, that water stagnation can be mitigated in as much as it will recharge the groundwater system also 
so basically for a small community the uh, this is the recharge where everyone can involve and as an individual they can take initiatives so if a single individual does rainwater harvesting the advantage is a small water mount will be created nearby his premise within his premise a water mount will be created this will not allow the movement of ground water towards the downstream side so it will check it, it is not that 100% it will hold it will check the movement or retard the movement of ground water towards the downstream so that a water mount uh, will protect the system so if the community does it as a whole regionally the ground water table will be increased to the tune of ranging from 0.2 to 0.6 or even 1 meter so increase of 0.6 meter to 1 meter uh, for over a regional scale, on a regional scale is a very big uh, achievement so the, the, this way if we can do so, uh, so nature has given in abundance plenty of water resources it is only the poor management of water resource that is putting us in trouble and the utilization of water not at the right place and right time so these are the problems due to which water crisis is created so we have to protect the water environment for our future generation by recharging the groundwater and uh, protecting the groundwater environment. Thank you.